Welcome back. Let's continue from where we left off. So the last way to wire components together is with something called the signal snake. The signal snake will take a bunch of inputs and collapse them into one graphical wire for you to expand somewhere else. Now you can make a signal snake in a few ways. First, let's get rid of our old ones. Now the one way you could make a signal snake is you could go over to your schematic library. Under layout, you can grab a signal snake and pull it into your schematic. Now then you'd have to go over to your channel count and you'd have to change it to the number of pins that you want. But there's an easier way to do this. Let's get rid of this guy. An easier way is to simply select all of your desired pins, pull them aside as if you're going to be doing traditional wiring, and hit the space bar. And now we've created our signal snake. So, you can wire all of your pins to one signal snake on one side. You see it's already got the right number of pins. You can wire all of the other side to another signal snake. And then all you have to do now is wire these two signal snakes together. Now you'll notice that the signal snakes have this unique little icon for their pin, this little sideways hourglass figure. Uh, and that's to prevent you from wiring anything to a signal snake other than another signal snake. So you can wire these two signal snakes together however you'd like. You can use traditional wiring. You could make a signal name and then connect it over here with the snake. One of the major advantages of using both the signal names and the signal snake is that you can wire components together that are on different pages. You see, when you've got a really large design, you're able to make multiple pages in your schematic to keep things organized. And you can add pages in a few different ways. You can go up here and hit the little plus button that says add schematic page. You see we now have a new tab. You can also go to your schematic pages section of your left side pane. And you can hit the plus icon here and that'll also create a new page. And you can rename these pages however you want. This is going to be my, let's rename this one my uh, DSP page for instance. And you can reorganize them, reorder them however you'd like as well. You can also close them uh, by clicking the X uh, icon in the tab. You'll notice that doesn't delete them. They're still over here and they live in your schematic pages. That just cleans things up. Look, I got it back. They're here. They are. They're alive. Uh, the only way to delete a page is to actually click on it over here and hit the delete key. So let's put all of this into action in a, a real world example. Let's grab some amplifiers into our design. We'll go to the inventory hit our plus icon and we'll add some amplifiers. Let's add a Powerlight 340 and a PL380. And you'll notice that we can see these being added here in our inventory. And let's also add a loudspeaker. We'll add, let's say, a Wide Line 8. Now we're going to drag the components for all of our new inventory items into our schematic. The two Powerlights and the Wide Line 8. And now we're going to wire them together. So, We'll use the data port to send our audio to the 340, and then we'll use that 340 to power the high frequency of the wide line. You can see that the pin tells us uh, what it is. That's the high frequency, HF. Then we'll use the other data port out to power our 380, and we'll use these to power the medium frequency and the low frequency here. And there you have it, a fully functional wired system. Now, there's obviously no EQ or DSP going on in this design. We were only wiring components together so you can learn about wiring. In the next few tutorials, you'll learn more about the DSP components that the QSYS Designer software has to offer. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.